of all of the kitchens that these delectable, delicious, vibrant, colorful, decorative, chewy, amazing, red velvet cookies had to come into, they came into mine. So here are the ingredients and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with our dry ingredients, three cups of all-purpose flour, four big tablespoons of cocoa, three little teaspoons of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna whisk that girl together. Whisk. Nothing clever today, just whisk it. So starting with our wet ingredients, we need one cup or two sticks of butter, mm -hmm. two thirds cups of packed brown sugar, and we need one cup of regular sugar. And we're gonna cream those bad boys together. As you guys know, the creaming process takes a little time, so be patient with it. We wanna make sure that it's at a creamy consistency before moving forward. Then we wanna add two large eggs or two huevos grandes. And I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I mix my eggs separately. So here's just one and here's the second. So I decided to get a little spicy and I added two teaspoons, but of my bourbon vanilla. Yeah, bourbon vanilla. It's a different taste, I tell you. And we're gonna add an ounce of food coloring. Just, just throw that whole bottle in there. Just, just go for it, go for it. Yeah. And we're gonna mix all of that together until they're really cute, pretty, and red. Now let's add our dry ingredients. And I'm gonna do this in two parts just because I know it's a big double batch and I don't want a big flowery mess. So. So we're gonna get our baking sheet lined with parchment paper, get our medium sized cookie scoop, and we are gonna go to town. Now, do you have to chill this dough? No, but some recipes say you would, I don't. So let's bake at 350 for eight to 10 minutes, and they're gonna look like this after eight minutes. I always take them out, push down the air because I'm extra and it's unnecessary, and I put them back in, but before I do, look at that. Look at those cookies. Listen, listen, Linda, these cookies look so delicious. And just to make sure that they're cooked all the way through, I'm gonna throw them back in the oven for two more minutes. And I'm gonna rest them in the pan for five. So you wanna know how to make the ones with the white chocolate chips, right? Mm -hmm. Same ingredients, just with the dough, you just throw some chips in there. Mix it up real good and I bake these for 10 minutes because they're a little bigger and I wanted to do bakery style. So you see me here after 10 minutes, took them out of the oven, pushing them down just so I can see where they are on the inside and they still need time in the oven. They're bigger, so of course they do. But before I put them back in the oven, look what they look like. Look at there, they got a little bit of crust forming on the top of them. I love seeing cracks on top of cookies. Don't ask me why, I am just that girl but I'm gonna throw them back in the oven for three more minutes. And then when I take them out, I'm gonna do the chip technique. Anytime you want a chipped cookie to come out looking picture perfect, as soon as the cookie comes out of the oven, throw some extra chips on top. Be extra, be pretty, be creative. This is what they'll look like. While these are cooling, I'm gonna make a cream cheese glaze. And I'm gonna take some cream cheese, powdered sugar, vanilla, and some heavy cream and mix it together until it's my desired consistency. 
I'm not going to give specific measurements for this because it's really based on how thick or how thin you'd like this mixture. So now I'm going to add this heavy cream in and you want to do this in small doses. I normally take the cap of the heavy cream and just put it in via cap just how much the consistency I want. It wasn't getting that way so therefore I just said let's pour this thing in there. And notice I only poured a little bit but that seemed to get the consistency that I wanted. So I can show a close up of what I personally like. I'm like yeah okay that works for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these Wilton piping bags. And I normally just buy these by the box. I love these things. And you just wanna spoon the glaze in. Therefore, you get more of a controlled pour. Push everything down as far as you can towards the tip. Snip a little bit of the tip off. Don't, don't go too big there. But now, as you can see, I'm gonna demonstrate how you can glaze your cookie. Look at there, just based on the pressure and how you want it to go, it's so easy with these piping bags. So another design I thought of, I'm like, eh, okay, let's see what I can do. And I liked it, I'm like, eh, it looks a little plain. So I decided to throw some of those Wilton pink sprinkles on there because it's Valentine's Day and pink is my favorite color. Pink is my favorite color. Y'all gonna get tired of hearing that. <laughs> Now with this part, I didn't show exactly how I glazed it, but I just pushed the glaze down in the middle until it got to the edge and threw some pecans on top. But look at how this goes through. Look at this, oh my gosh. Now, will this glaze harden? Yes, it will, it would take some time. But once again, McGreedy didn't wanna wait to show you guys how it looks when it hardens. <laughs> so look at that, doesn't that look like a cake just smushed? In cookie form oh let's not forget about Big Bertha okay so this cookie when I tell you was so delicious and it was gooey and it was wonderful I had a camera in one hand and then the other hand trying to break it you see my struggle but I had to break it the right way to show you guys exactly how it looks and by placing those chips on top on the hot cookie it melts in it doesn't burn you don't get that look on the outside look look at how that look look at this color turn it around girl turn it show them show them look at that i'm telling y'all oh my gosh wait a minute is that the crack man it's over it already okay thank you for everyone who has shared like comment and subscribed i will see you guys the next video